This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollar. So apparently the bar to be a conservative or at least a well-known conservative, a conservative of note, a media figure, uh, even a congresswoman. We're going to talk about two people here. One is Marjorie Taylor Greene and the other is Mike Lindell, the my pillow guy. Both colossally stupid. People complain about my ad hominem attacks, that I call names too much. Um, and I would say this, that if I didn't bring an argument to the table, if all I did was call names, eh, it would be a problem, (laughs) but I don't do that. Um, I also don't feel I have any, any, any obligation to treat with respect people who are actively attempting to tear down our country, actively trying to destroy our nation and our democracy, our very democracy. So two things I want to talk about today. One is my pillow, the my pillow guy, uh, claiming because he's still on the ra- making the round, saying that the the election was stolen and he has proof. Now he's not only saying that there were thousands of people who were older than one hundred years old who voted in the twenty twenty election, he's saying there were many, many, many people who were two hundred years old. <laughs> Doesn't give any names. Doesn't even give the states where it happened. Um, But he's also claiming, get this, seriously, that there was someone who was 850 years old who voted in the 2020 election. Obviously, he's making a point to to, to fraud. That uh, that can't be that they're 850 years old. Doesn't give us the state. Doesn't give us a name. No details. He just says it. And it's supposed to be accepted as fact. But watch this clip, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Well, I'm going to give an example today, and I'm not going to say what state. Uh, We pulled up, we we put from the voter rolls to one of our team. We have a team that goes through all of it now with this other system that pulls up all anomalies. What I mean by that is five people voting from the same address um, uh, or five of the same names. Um, uh, I'll give you an example today. 2,650 people over the age of 100. Now, you might say, well, well, that's that could be, that could be. 2,000 of them were over 200. Wouldn't you like to live in that state? Right, two, they were 200 and some years old. So so obviously, they and one guy was 800. They were 200 years old. These people that live, they are voting are 200 years old. Of course, they're obviously... Not living, They're obviously but. deceased, but one guy was 850 years old. Okay, um, and these are and these are facts. You can get them. You can get them from your own state's thing. Now you have the remember you have non-residents of voting, right. but basically it pulls out all these um, deviations, anomalies, and they're stacked up like cordwood. And then we have the canvassing. So then we we back it up. So let's say you have an address like we did, like in Wisconsin. Remember, where it was 23,000 people. Look, to put it plainly, this is what happens when you give dumb people power. When stupid people have power over the electorate. Mike Lindell is not a smart man. Maybe he's in some kind of psychological crisis. I don't know. But to make the claim that 2,650 people were over 100 and 2,000 of them were over 200 and no red flags are raised is just a lie an unsubstantiated conspiracy theory that he's creating out of thin air. And that one was 850 years old, 850 years old. That means that they were born around 1170, the year 11. What was going on in the year 1170? It would be six, I did the math here, 606 years later that America would even become a country. So are they, is there a birth certificate that they, what? And people are following him, blindly following and believing everything he says. It's like these doomsday pastors who continue to kick the can down the road with their predictions and prophecies relative to the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's what he's done the entire time. Oh, Donald Trump's going to be president before Thanksgiving is where it is now, but it shifted. It was going to be March, then it was August, then it was October. Uh, I mean, how many times is it going to shift and people finally lose faith 
in this charlatan, this dumb, dumb grifter? I don't know. I don't know the answer because I'm not taken in by him. You're not taken in by him. And the other one, just seriously, stop electing stupid people. Obviously, I'm not yelling at the the the, the, the larger uh, cross section of my audience because you're here because you agree with me. But those of you out there, and if you happen to live in her district, why would why would someone elect Marjorie Taylor Greene to represent them, to be their voice in Congress? Here she is on another one of those. Um, a uh, um, uh, uh, real America's Voice, or you know, whatever the the Newsmax or the OAN, th- this 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 cadre of right wing conspiracy networks, and she's making some some obviously um, par for the course arguments relative to ivermectin of Republicans and conservatives all across the country, but she's doing it in about the most stupid way she can, claiming that ivermectin, a drug won the Nobel Peace Prize. She also is inventing some real creative words. Watch this. I know you're on the road, you're working hard. I appreciate you being here. Look, the Republican Party is standing up to the Biden administration for their lives about ivermectin. What do you think the response is gonna look like from the, from the government here at this point, the federal government? Well, they should start paying attention because the American people are fed up. And I believe that they have blood on their hands. Ivermectin is a very good drug. Its safetyness has been proven for decades. It even won a Nobel Peace Prize. And it is absolutely irresponsible for the Biden administration, uh, the CDC, uh, Dr. Fauci, and any of these doctors to be advising people to, to not prescribe it. As a matter of fact, my own husband took ivermectin and also received a Regeneron treatment when he had COVID-19 uh, not too long ago. And he he was like healed within a matter of days. Uh, we don't need people to be hospitalized. We don't need to see more COVID-19 deaths. We need to be treating this, um, you know, bioweapon made in China, uh, COVID-19, uh, responsibly. And that means attacking from every single yeah. angle yeah. and ivermectin is a great drug a safe drug and they should be uh in encouraging doctors to prescribe it medical advice from dumb shit marjorie taylor green listen ivermectin is a great drug ivermectin is a safe drug when used for the manner with, with when used as it was designed to be used and one safetyness it's been had proven safetyness. <laughs> wow. And the claim that it won the Nobel Peace Prize. One, drugs don't win prizes, Nobels. But, but uh, the, the, dr- the drug was involved in a Nobel Prize, not a Nobel Peace Prize, idiot. Uh, I'm going to read something from Reuters, a fact check about this very thing. Fact check 2015 Nobel Prize for Ivermectin intended for treatment of parasitic infections doesn't prove its efficacy on COVID-19. Social media users claim the drug Ivermectin is safe to use as it received the Nobel Prize in 2015. While two scientists did win the prize for the medication, this was for parasitic infections and it does not mean the drug is safe or effective in the treatment of COVID-19 a virus, not my commentary here, not Reuters, not a parasitic infection. A virus is different than a parasite. A tick is a parasite. A roundworm is a parasite. A pinworm is a, uh, a parasite. Tapeworm. Those are parasitic infections, not a virus. It's different. Continuing on from the Reuters fact check. As of this article's publication, public health authorities in the United States are not recommending ivermectin for treatment of COVID-19. Scientific studies are ongoing. Scientific studies are always ongoing. 
And that is where we are, is that conservatives want to conflate two things. Well, it, it, quit saying it's only for horses. It's not. It's not. It's not only a, a, a uh, livestock drug, but it works for parasitic infections. There is no evidence. Scientific studies are ongoing, but there's no evidence that it, that it has any efficacy or usefulness, if you will, for COVID-19. And they, rather than just get the vaccine, it's hydroxychloroquine, it's all these other things, gargling iodine, dangerous things they're doing rather than just get the vaccine. Bananas. Quit putting stupid people into positions of power. It's as simple as that. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think about these dumb dumbs. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. Thanks for joining me. Happy Friday, everybody. Follow me on social media. I would absolutely be delighted. I don't think I've ever said the word delighted before. Uh, I would be delighted if you'd follow me on social media. I'm at Dollamore everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, you know, the social media. And if, uh, if I bring you some value, if I bring you some entertainment or information that you like, if you enjoy what I do, if I appreciate what I do, please consider supporting my work, helping produce my work here on the platform for as little as $1.99 a month. You can become a channel member helping produce what I do here. You can also go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast and uh, become a patron. Same rules apply. Anyway, I love you guys. I sure do appreciate you. I'll see you next time. Quit putting dumb people in power. <laughs> Be genuine. Take care of one another.